Hello, everyone. Welcome to another webinar from our Rock in Action webinar series. My name is Guilherme Turezo, and I'm part of the Rocky DM support team. And today we are going to make a short presentation about wear and erosion and show how we can use the EM simulations to uh, evaluate this equipment and uh, their operating conditions. I hope you enjoy. <clears throat> well, in many industrial uh, applications, uh, the particle handling can cause wear on equipments. And transporting uh, either diluted bulk material or uh, other processes which the bulk material handling is one of the main phases, we can detect some damages on equipment during its operation. And so what is wear after all? Uh, we can consider wear as a material volume loss due to shear work and its modification, uh, actually the modification of the parts original shape to another geometry profile. And in DEM simulations, uh, we can, uh, these simulations can bring some insights to wear analysis in equipment, such as better design and operating conditions, uh, evaluations, and worn regions prospections uh, during the equipment operation. Well, whenever Sorry, whenever um, you want to evaluate the, the effect of an equipment uh, wear on a particle behavior and also its efficiency uh, during its useful life, you can consider wear analysis in your DEM simulations. Therefore, leading to a better product development and operating conditions uh, evaluation. We have here a SAGMIL uh, section example and its geometry modification uh, due to wear caused by particles. And here in the bottom, uh, we can also see a pipe erosion uh, example, uh, more precisely about uh, dilute particle transportation inside a pipe. So uh, let's understand how wear is calculated inside rock and uh, for wear calculations, Rocky uses the Arcard law um, equation, which is based on the relation of material volume loss and the shear work on the geometry caused by particle. This wear rate is adjustable and can be set by the user during setup. And of course, this will define how much volume the geometry will lose during the simulation. And with this, and together with fuel data, we can correlate the simulation time and operation time, bringing uh, very useful information for uh, how particle behavior will change during the wear on a real time scale. So uh, here uh, we have, uh, again, a segmental section example, and uh, it being, it's been wearing over time. And it is expected to segments to have a very long useful life, actually, because of their expensive maintenance. And for this reason, Rocky uh, will provide, uh, actually will predict how efficient the ball mill this sag mill will work when under a certain operating conditions and a lifter design. This is a crucial information for the equipment uh, power consumption, uh, efficiency ratio, ratio over time, and, and so on. So you can see that uh, the real time scale can be compared uh, with the simulation time by this correlation. And today uh, we have a demonstration about how to set up and post-process uh, a SAGMIL simulation in Rocky. So we are, we're going to see uh, how to set up the wear parameters on boundaries, how to do a particle injection inside a mill section, 
how to set up uh, a Cartesian periodic domain, how to evaluate uh, the quality of boundary triangle shapes for wear, for wear simulations, and of course, plot some particle trajectories and visualize the wear on the geometries called by the particle. So let's uh, begin uh, with the setup. By creating a 3D view, we can visualize the uh, side view section. Uh, that is a simplified um, model for this case. In physics, uh, we assure that the gravity direction is minus y direction, and we keep all the uh, models as default. Here we have uh, two um, geometries. One is enabled the whole time, which is the wear uh, geometry. And the other one will be uh, as a reference, used as a reference. And so it will never be enabled. Uh, of course, in the, war the geometry that will uh, be uh, worn, uh, we have to evaluate uh, the triangles. So we always expect the triangles to be uh, to have a very good aspect ratio and a very good size compared to the uh, geometry's limits. So here on the wear geometry, on the mill wear geometry, we are uh, saying that the part of the geometries, uh, triangle geometries, they are very good uh, on aspect ratio. So going to the wear tab. We're going to enable the wear and uh, keep it as default for this volume uh, to shear work ratio. And uh, we can move forward to uh, another step, which is the motion. In the ro no rotating motion, we have an angular acceleration between zero to three seconds. And after three seconds, we have a constant uh, velo velocity of 10 RPM. In order to uh, assign this uh, motion, we can uh, multi-select the geometries and go to motion frame and assign the rotation motion. In the second wheel, we have rock particles and steel particles, right? So we have rock material, which is uh, this one we are seeing, and also the steel material. You will see that they both have different densities between each other. We have to assign the correct interaction between uh, these materials. And of course, uh, for the particles, uh, we have some rock particles, which they have a particle size distribution, and we have to assign the right material for them. The same thing for steel particles. They have only one size, but we need to assign the right material for them. So going on inputs, and in this case, we are going to uh, do a volume fill uh, in this new section. So we have to assign the mass for these particles, the rock particles and steel particles. And we will define the uh, mill region to compute these injections. So uh, the volume fill will calculate the geometry bounds in order to uh, limit the uh, particle injection. We are going to do domain set settings. So we are uh, setting a periodic domain. Particles that will leave uh, on the sides, they will reappear on the other side. So this will be a Cartesian uh, periodic domain on the Z direction. And uh, we can go to the solar tab already. Uh, we'll define the wear to start on five, at five seconds and put the simulation duration as 100 seconds together with an output frequency of 0.05. So we can already start our simulation. And uh, after the simulation is finished, we can post process it. So uh, see that these particles uh, are already impacting our, um, our segment section. We'll hide them, but we are more interested in evaluating the shape of the 
uh, side mill, the liners of the side mill, and how they are going to uh, change on geometry. So we'll select the millware and uh, skip to the end of the simulation. There we'll see that uh, compared to the mill reference uh, boundary, the millware geometry uh, it, uh, it is uh, worn uh, by a lot, so we have to uh, check how much it was displaced radially. So we'll create a new expression on radial displacement, output unit meters, and use the displa displacement on X and Y. So this radial displacement will be the square root of the displacement X squared and displacement Y squared. In order to visualize this in a better way, we can uh, create a plane in our uh, mill section and uh, select the plane normal to Z. So we can see only the, uh, the profile of this uh, mill section and color this by the radial displacement. There we will see that the uh, greater displacement uh, occurred on the peaks of the of the liners. So another good uh, post processing to make is to uh, evaluate the particles trajectories uh, in a new liner and in, on a worn liner. So uh, going to particles, we're going to select particle trajectory. Uh, in this, we're going to create the new liner particle trajectory, uh, go to uh, the beginning of the simulation, which is uh, 10 seconds, and calculate it over uh, five seconds of simulation. There we will see uh, the particle's trajectories for, these, um, for this time, and we can uh, visualize it um, with, together with the absolute translational velocity of particles. Uh, let's hide the, the radial displacement, actually, uh, in order to see in a better way. And after this, we will duplicate the user process and create another particle trajectory for a worn liner. Still uh, calculating for five seconds, uh, but we're moving to uh, to the end of the simulation, so 90 seconds, okay, and we can calculate that again. You see that uh, the whole particle's trajectory has changed uh, for a new liner when comparing, comparing to a worn liner. So this will impact on the uh, energy, impact energies that particles will receive, the rocks will receive, and of course on the grinding efficiency, on the milling efficiency of the equipment. So the results uh, from this simulation, of course, uh, they can, can prospect many operation issues and uh, they will help on determining, uh, of course, the right ratio content of material and steel balls. And beyond that, we can find the correct worn profile of liners and evaluate their impact on the particle dynamics inside the mill, right? Uh, we can also calculate the milling efficiency and over time, of course, and test new liner profiles, operating conditions, and, and so on. Well, uh, that's basically the end of our, demo, our Rocky demonstration about where. And I would like to invite you all to attend our next 15-minute uh, webinars that will take place on the upcoming weeks, actually. Uh, the next one will be in August 17, about adhesion and suspension. Uh, see you there, and thank you, everyone, for attending for today's session.